Binster. Binge. Great binge and lesser binge. <laughs> amazing. What's amazing? The names of our English villages, Watson. What foreigner reading these could ever think of us as stiff and sober-minded people? Bippery Cross, Birra Crags, Bird Cherry Brook and Birding Peace Place, Burlston Junction. When do we go? Go where? To Burlston Manor, Burlston, Sussex. Whatever led you to believe that I'm interested in Sussex, Burlston or Burlston Manor? No doubt you saw the account of the rather gruesome murder of Squire John Douglas. Quite so. The case has interesting features. But at the moment I'm more interested in the uh, fly fishing possibilities in the neighborhood of Burlston. Ah, that would be the Aaron. Runs within two or three miles of the manor house. Hmm? Oh, what manor house? Burlston, the home of the late Squire Douglas. Oh, yes, yes, I remember. I, I believe he was quite a fisherman. The moat is 40 feet wide. 40 feet wide? Well, well, good Lord. He could probably fish from his bedroom window. And when the drawbridge is raised, the place becomes an island. Four hours after the bridge is raised, the body of Squire Douglas is found in his study with half his head blown off. That should appeal to you. Hmm. Fishing seems a safe business by comparison. Do you row a boat? A boat? For fly fishing? Have you ever fished before? Does this look like the equipment of an amateur? <laughs> Odd word. Which? Equipment. All the fishermen I've ever known talk about their tackle. What do you deduce from that, Holmes? Obvious. Your fishing friends either lack experience or vocabulary. We deep sea fishermen are in the equipment class. None of your nasty little bundles. Yes, that gaff is far more suitable for a shark than a trout. Do you really think so? No good for trout? Well, it depends what trout you're after. Oh. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, we must carry a tape measure. A tape measure? What on earth for? To measure our catch, of course. To measure our catch. And throw back the little ones. A good rule in life, Watson. Always remember to throw back the little ones. You think our prey will count as a big one or a little one? Well, hardly as big as Squire Douglas lying dead in his castle, surrounded by his moat. Holmes? You've been analyzing this case. Well, you know, I haven't got enough data yet for analysis, really. Do you think it could be an accident? What, with a sawn off shotgun? And the triggers of both barrels wired together? Murder, eh? Yes, possibly. What do you mean by possibly? Don't sit there, man. That may be opportunity knocking. Oh. Come in. Fisherman. Oh, God! Oh, tell him! Blowing me! No, oh, wow! Hey there, boy. Hmm. There's only a little one. Don't you like it, Watson? Appreciate your view, intriguing affair, Burlstone Manor, signed Inspector McLeod. Ha! Please, English, for I'm utterly baffled. Oh. Hey, where is it? Where's what? Well, the tape measure, of course. Where is that tape measure? Old and the fiddle case together, sir. Fiddle? Violin case, boy. Oh, tell me, Watson, uh, how are we off for trains? Trains? Ah, yes, now, let me see, Burlston. Yes, now, that would be the West Sussex Little Hampton Bogner line. Now, there's a 10.15. Now, that doesn't stop. Of course, it's a 12.3. That begins in at 4.2 or 4.7. I say, I've forgotten, actually. 
You see, you can't remember whether it's 4 2 or 4 7. Come, Watson, you're slipping. Blimey! Does it keep all the time? Time's in his head. Where else, of course? We are a nation of railway pioneers, my boy. Like a great many Englishmen before him, Dr. Watson restricts his reading to the Bible, the Times, and Bradshaw's Railway Guide to the British Isles. Here, boy. Man of the March hairs, that's what you two are. <laughs> <laughs> I say, Watson, have you seen my weekend bag anywhere? I suspect it's under the stairs. Mrs. Hudson got very tired of seeing it lying about. Oh, good. Well, that means it hasn't been unpacked anyway. I assume not. Excellent. Then everything is ready. Oh, be a good fellow, would you, and uh, dig out that bag and put it in the cab along with that uh, uh, tackle. Why? Aren't you going to be here? I have a little reading to do. Uh, pick me up at the British Museum Library. Uh, say, half an hour before the train leaves. Now, look here, Holmes, this is no time to go reading. You'll miss the train. I cannot vouch for the punctuality of Dr. Watson or the reliability of the company's steam engines, but I, for one, propose to be at Burlston Halt at 4.2 p.m. precisely. <laughs> Is it four seven? It was a nice piece of work, if I say so myself. The entire story hung on a spider's thread. A spider's thread? Exactly. Huh. Ah, it sounds interesting, Inspector. Now perhaps you'll start at the beginning. Simply stated, the castle, as you'll see, has a moat. And when it's up, as it was at the time of the murder, it's a sealed fortress. Who was in the castle at the time of the crime? The murdered man's wife, Mrs. Douglas, and a foreign friend, John Morell. Just those two? and the servants, but we've been able to rule them out completely. Hmm. And from your description of the house, it would have to be one of them. Either Mrs. Douglas, or this friend of hers, Morel, or both of them. They tried to make it appear as though someone had broken into the house and then dived through the windows to swim the moat. But you disproved it? Completely. How? I'll tell you when we get there. This uh, murder weapon, a sawn-off shotgun, I believe. An odd weapon, that. And a foreign gun, too. Three letters on the barrel. P-E-N. Aha. A larger P with a flourish over it, followed by a smaller E and N. That's right. Ah, the Pennsylvania Small Arms Company, the famous American firm. That's perfect. That's all I need. You mean you need additional evidence? Well, Mr. Holmes, every little helps, you know. Then your case against Morell is not complete. It's complete as far as... How did you know Morel is the murderer? How did you know? He has to be. Why? He's the only one who could be. Suppose I were to tell you that Morel is not your murderer. How do you know? Yes, Holmes, how do you know? Why didn't you arrest him? Well, I... He doesn't act like a murderer. Ah, he's too self-confident. Eh? That's right. Seems to be daring you to arrest him. Yes. Yeah. How do you know all this? Holmes, do you know this man, Morell? Fascinating. Fascinating. The case has suddenly assumed the most astounding proportions and the most astonishing challenge, Watson. Yes, it is lovely, isn't it? What did you mean, Mr. Holmes? Nothing. I just think it's a lovely building. No, I mean when you said that Morel didn't murder Mr. Douglas. Oh, that. Yes, what did you mean? How do you know he didn't do it? Well, if he didn't do it, she did. You're jumping again, McLeod. You're jumping. But it has to be one or the other. Does it really? What's he talking about? Well, don't you know? No, I don't know. If two people are in a sealed house with a murdered man, one of them has to be a murderer. That's common sense. Ah, but is it logical? 
What do you mean? Is it logical? I don't know, but Holmes says that all the time. I was hoping you might be able to tell me. He hasn't been moved. That's just the way we found him last night. Watson? Of course, death was instantaneous. I should say so. The charge was not fired directly into the face, as the newspaper's account had it. Uh -huh. I'd say the blast came from below and that the gun was almost vertical. Excellent, Watson. Excellent. May I see this shotgun, McLeod? Holmes, look at this. Good Lord. Well, it's, it's a brand like cattle. Well, how old would you say it was? Have you got your glass there? Eh? Yes. Thank you. It's very difficult to estimate marking like this, Holmes, but I'd say it's... Well, it's over 15 years. 20. Mr. Morell? At your service, Mr. Holmes. Dr. Watson? News travels quickly. This is a small village. You said 20 years? Yes. The same age as... this. It stands for the Mesa Valley, Arizona. Gold claim number 341. That is where John and I met 20 years ago. There were three of us. We registered the claim, worked it, and then sold it. We divided the money in thirds and went our different ways. Two years ago, I looked John up here and stayed on. I liked it. And the third partner? He lost his money, I believe his mind. He came to believe that we had cheated him. And he swore to kill us ten years ago. Why didn't he? He couldn't find us. No, we didn't have the same names at the time. Do you think your old partner could have done that? I don't know, Mr. Holmes. I am not the detective. True. True. Well, we must bear that in mind. You tried to make it appear as though another man had been here and went out through the window. Did I? He tried to build an elaborate story. A man of his size was seen passing through the village wearing a loud tweed top coat and a wide-brimmed hat. He was heading this way. On the window ledge, there is a footprint in blood. Indicating, of course, that the murderer dived through the window and swam the moat. But he didn't. How do you know? Because, Mr. Morell, outside that window and just a few feet down is a very large and at least a month old spider's web. Anyone jumping or diving through the window would have to pass through the web. And no one did. Well done, McLeod. Well done. A spider's web. The English police have the most amazing allies, I must say. Now that you have made your deductions, Mr. McLeod, exactly what do they mean to me? For the moment, nothing. But I suggest you do not leave the castle grounds. And if I try to live, Well done, McLeod. You certainly got your man. But I'm not rushing in to make any arrest. I'm going to make sure the case is iron cast. Oh, very wise. And what's the motive? Revenge for the Venice Valley affair? I've got to go a bit careful there, Doctor. If you ask me, it's a case of, uh, Cherche la woman. Oh. Was he? Oh. Is he Douglas? Well, you know how these things are, Doctor, between us, men of the world. We know mm. how a situation like this can... Mm. Oh, of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Delicate situation, then. Delicate. Yes, delicate. delicate. Might um, almost be called the case of the other man. <laughs> the other dumbbell. 
Who? Not who, what. What? That's right, what. What are you talking about? That. There's only one dumbbell. One dumbbell? That's right. Well? There's only one dumbbell, Watson. I know, that's it over there. Yes, where's the other one? Well, I don't know, I've only just come here. Do you know where the other one is? What difference does it make? Well, that's right, yes, what difference does it make? Maybe there is only one dumb, d b bell, d dumbbell. One dumbbell? But they come in twos. Perhaps he only had one. Watson, do you mean to tell me that you can stand there, surrounded by all these athletic trophies, and suggest to me that such a man would only use one dumbbell? Well, what difference does it make? Yes, what difference does it make? Yeah. Well, if you two are convinced that you can solve the case with the aid of a convenient spider, I'm going fishing. Your what? Oh, he's going fishing. He's brought his tackle. Why? To catch fish. Then I take it you're satisfied with my analysis of the crime. Find the dumbbell. Hang the dumbbell! You can't hang him until you find him. Who? The man who took the dumbbell. You've gone too far now, Holmes. I think you've made him very angry. Then he should fish. It soothes the nerves. Are you really going to fish? I am. Where? Out of that window. It looks very comfortable. Well, what do you expect to catch? A herring. A red herring. May I have the tape measure, Watson? To measure a red herring? to measure the big red herrings. The little ones I plan to throw back. Holmes, you're up to something. I am. What? Would you like to help? Of course. Well, look, take the good inspector down to the local pub and keep him there for at least an hour. While you fish for red herring? At the moment, I'm fishing for bait. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but I'll do it. Good. Remember, one hour. I may enjoy myself in the local and stay too. guessing with him. For all we know, he may really have been fishing. Perhaps we should have given him more time. He's been an hour. That's all he asked for. Yes, that's right enough. Inspector McLeod. Hello, Sergeant. Have you seen Mr. Holmes? I certainly have, sir. What's wrong? You know the staircase in that room? Mm -hmm. huh? Mr. Holmes was sliding down them banisters. He was what? That's right, sir. Sliding down the banisters, he was. Well, well he was probably in investigating something. Probably. Well, let's ask him. There must be some reason behind it. Good afternoon, gentlemen. <laughs> Ask him. Ask me what? Well? What have you been doing while we were away? Well, first I fished. No. Yeah. And then I slid down the banisters. I told you. Why? Why not? Well. And you, Inspector McLeod, are going to drain the moat. I'm going to what? Drain the moat. Empty it right down to the bottom. I can't do that. That's a major engineering job. Don't you realize that's a real river that runs round the house? Well, in that case, don't drain the moat, but tell everyone you're going to. And then what? Then we'll all meet back here in an hour's time. And see if we can find somebody pulling something out of the moat. Exactly. <laughs> what? Red herrings. As mad as a March air.
much longer? Not much. You're certain everyone believes they're going to drain the moat? I don't know who believes it, but everyone knows I said it. Do you think someone will come to the murder room? Someone has been in it for some time. How do you know? The lights are out. Because I left them on. Mm -hmm. Look, what? That's it, let's go. Excuse me, what are you using for bait? Well, would you mind uh, holding this? Thank you. What clothes did you say the stranger was wearing, McLeod? A loud tweed top coat and a white brimmed hat. Like these? The dumbbell? Holmes, how did you know? When you're working near water, Watson, and a heavy object has disappeared, you may conclude, until you can prove otherwise, that it has been used to prevent some object from rising to the surface. All right, Morell. You're under arrest for the murder of John Douglas. It is my duty to warn you that anything you say may be taken down and used in evidence... No, it... no, no, MacLeod. You haven't got it at all. What? This gentleman didn't kill John Douglas because John Douglas isn't dead. He isn't what? Dead. The man whose body you discovered in here is the very man who came back to... No, no you're not with me, are you, MacLeod? Uh, would you tell him, please? These clothes belong to our third partner. The man who's been searching for you for ten years. Yes. He found us and arrived here with a shotgun. He and John struggled and the shot went off. That explains the vertical angle of the blast. In the ensuing struggle, the gun went off. I heard the report and ran down immediately. I timed it from your room. Fifteen seconds if you run, and ten seconds if you slide down the banisters. I ran. I thought you would. John was panic-stricken when he saw what he had done. I got the idea to change their identities. But then where is Douglas? With the aid of my tape measure, I was able to ascertain that there is a hollow space behind that wall. I imagine it conceals a passage under the moat. Yes, Mr. Holmes, it does. And John has had a 36-hour head start. We'll stop him. I told him you would. I'll issue orders for the apprehension of Mr. Douglas. And we'll talk about your part in this, sir, in the morning. You have conspired to conceal evidence. I'll still be here in the morning, Inspector. A very brilliant piece of deductions, Mr. Holm. An excellent application of applied psychology. I haven't been tricked many times in my life. You must remember that the next time you become involved with murder. And you can now continue your fishing in a more normal manner. Uh, fishing? No, I, I don't care for it, really. <coughs> Unless it's deep sea, of course. Uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, but in the absence of an ocean in the immediate vicinity, I think we'd better start back to Baker Street immediately. Well, now, there's a 9.13 or a 10.23. The 10.23 will hold us up at Tunbridge quite a while. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Ah, not at all, not at all.
Wait here, Slim. I'll be down in two shakes. A visitor, Watson. What, a visitor? Yes. A young lady who arrived in a covered wagon. A what? A covered wagon. And what do you find strange about that? I'm a look at Mr. Sherlock Holmes. You've tracked him down, madam. Won't you come in? Name's Minnie Mallon, Mr. Holmes. Mel Ronda, Texas. <laughs> I'm sure glad to know you. Well, I'm very pleased to know you. With uh, Bison Jack's radio, I believe. Say, how'd you figure that out? Well, I, your, your dress is uh, very charming, but uh, scarcely commonplace in London. Well, uh, didn't have a chance to change to my store clothes. Came straight here from a hotel. Who's he? Oh, he? Oh, no, 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 that's uh, Dr. Watson, my uh, esteemed partner. Howdy, Doc. <laughs> How do you do, indeed? <laughs> I'm sorry to bother you boys so late, but I got a case for you, Mr. Holmes. You're gonna like this one. Yes, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, well, won't you uh, sit down? No time to sit down. Not with that man in my hotel room. Man in your room? Well, don't get excited, Doc. It's all right. He's dead. Oh, well, of course, in that case, I... What, dead? With his head diced up a little and my tomahawk laying next to him. Great Scott. Uh, tell me, Miss uh, O'Malley, uh, who is this gentleman? Don't know. Never saw the critter before in my life. Walked into my room after the show tonight, and there he was, stretched out on the floor, dead. And it was uh, your tomahawk? Sure was. Used in the show, but I left it in my room tonight. Sherlock, you got to get that hombre's body out of my room. But Miss O'Malley, one can't just... <laughs> Minnie is the name, Doc. Well, uh, Doctor, what, uh, I mean, uh, Doc is, is right, uh, Minnie. It's considered illegal to move a body from the place of crime. Well, it certainly is in England. Of course, I don't know what they do in Texas. Well, it was illegal to tomahawk the critter in my room, too, wasn't it? Well, I dare say it was. But uh, wouldn't it be simpler to notify the police? Sherlock, our Texas way, we call in the sheriff when we want to make a fuss about something. I don't want to make a fuss about this. Just want to get that body out of my room. Pronto. Pronto? Uh, is that his name? What language are you talking, Doc? Uh, Minnie, why don't you want to make a fuss about it? Well, I'm aiming to get myself hitched. Hitched? Hitched. A hook. Lasso tied down. Wed and holy matrimony. Oh. And what would Freddie and his mother count say if they found I got a dead man in my room? Uh, Freddie, I presume, is uh, your fiancé. Yeah. The Earl of Worcester. Met him last week when he got tossed off a bronco. Landed in his lap. Oh, I... I, I, I don't think I, I've heard of the title. Well, Freddy calls it something else too, Doc. But it's spelled W-O-R-C-E-S-T-E-R. Worcester. Oh, yes, I see, yes. Lord Worcester. Mm-hmm. His ma would be fit to be hogtied if I got in any kind of scandal. Uh, Anglo-American relations are involved in this, Watson, to say nothing of uh, chivalry. Now, look here, Holmes, I know all about Anglo-American relations and then the chivalry, but, but just the same, I... Doc, maybe you'd better stay home tonight and leave this to me and Sherlock. Yes, maybe you'd better. It might turn out to be a rather risky business, Watson. Well, I... I, um, excuse me, what, um... What exactly is this? Hmm? It's a lasso, Doc. Oh. Well... You throw a half a with it. Well, you throw a half a where? Well, you don't really throw a half a dog. Mm -hmm. You just lasso them. Like this. Now, really, I... What on earth do you think, young woman, you're doing And with? then... What is the... You really, I... I 
refused point blank to travel in that disgusting conveyor. Oh, don't be so narrow-minded, Watson. Come on, get in. I tell you, I refuse point blank. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, Doc. You'll regret this. Take it away, Slim. Hey, hey. The man, after all, he has his principles. And you mustn't do this to me. What do you think you're doing? Faster, Watson, faster. What do you think you're doing? I can't put up with this. You'll stagger me, you. Come on, now, Watson, hurry, hurry. Come on. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Here knees we up, go. knees up, knees up, the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. Come on, Watson, come on. <laughs> He is, boys, just like I left him. He's dead all right, isn't he, Doc? He couldn't be deader. Yes. Nasty business, this. Whoever did it wasn't satisfied to hit him just once with that tomahawk. He hit him several times. Looks like a vengeance killing. Sounds like an engine on the warpath. I take it that this is the weapon you use in your performance, Minnie. Yeah. Bella stands there with a cigarette in his mouth, and I throw the tomahawk at him, slice off the cigarette. Bit risky, isn't it? Not if I don't miss, Doc. Oh, I see. When do you estimate the time of death, Doctor? Within the last two hours. It's perfectly straightforward, penetration of the cerebellum. He was hit more than once. Hmm. Aged about 30, I'd say. Occasionally wore glasses. Aha. Uh -huh. Wallet. No means of identification in it. Ah, what's this? Mm hmm. No doubt about his profession, Watson. Skeleton keys. By Jove, Holmes a burglar. Then that means, of course, he was after some jewels, and he must have had a partner, and then he and his partner... But he ain't got no jewels. Just some old engine beads, and who'd want them? Now, the problem becomes, where can we put his body? Now, look here, Holmes, we, we can't put his body anywhere. That's why that's preposterous. I've got it. We'll put it in the next room. Oh, now, look, Holmes, listen, you, you've got to listen to reason. You can't possibly... Anglo-American relations, Watson, remember? Careful, Boss and Jack doesn't see you. He's got his room down the hall. Ah. Thank you, my dear. My dear child, Holmes is the last person I'd leave this to. He has no more idea of when to stop than any man I have... Number 13, across the passage. Most appropriate. Couldn't think of a better. Come on now, times are wasting. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> All right, boys, all clear. Tell us what you're doing. Come along. I'm coming. I'm coming. Psst. Mr. Holmes. Hello, Tommy. I've got something for you, Mr. Holmes. Something real odd. Really, Tommy? What is it, eh? Well, sir, I happened to be passing one of the rooms tonight, and I looked inside. The door was open? Not exactly open, sir. In fact, it was closed, if you know what I mean. Uh, yes, I think I do know what you mean. Well, if a bloke wants to become a famous detective like you... Well, really, Tommy, there are more ethical ways of becoming a detective than looking through keyholes, but uh, uh, since you did, uh, what did you see? Someone's hand. Boy! Boy! Yes, Mum? There's a mouse in my room. I'll get it right out, Mum. How? I'm coming right away, Mum. Madam, might I suggest that you try mewing? Mewing? Yes, madam. Mewing. 
Huh. Disgraceful, if you ask me. I pay three shillings for my room, and I must mew like a cat. <coughs> well, now, Tommy, perhaps you'll tell me about that hand that you saw. Well, sir, all I saw was a hand turning a knob on a bedpost. Hand turning a knob on a bedpost. That's very interesting. Thank you very much, Tommy. Thank now you. Now run along and catch that mouse. Thank you, sir. Coming, madam. A tomahawk, I think it's called, sir. A native weapon of the North American Indian. Used times as a missile and sometimes as a hand weapon. Certainly. When I want the history of the tomahawk, Wilkins, I'll consult an encyclopedia. Yes? Oh, come in, Holmes. Dr. Watson? Hello, Inspector. How are you? Got your note list trade. Anything interesting on hand? Yes, murder. I thought you'd be interested. It's the kind of case you like. Really? Why? Well, a chambermaid found him like this a little while ago. Ah, well, poor chap. Yes, he was killed by this tomahawk. It's, um, a native weapon of the North American Indian. Sometimes used as a missile, sometimes a hand weapon. Well, that's the most observant of you, Lestrade. Uh, have you identified the victim? Oh, yes, of course. There's a burglar the name of Sly Sam Slyth. Room belongs to Mr. Honeywell here. Mr. Honeywell is a salesman. Women's quarters. Terrible. Terrible. A dead man in my room. I shall lose all my customers. Yes, that must be very awkward for you. Uh, Holmes, don't you think um, this is a time for the magnifying glass, a little uh, detection? Well, Watson, I don't really like interfering in the Yard's cases. Besides, it seems plain enough without magnification. Oh, you mean Mr. Honeywell? What? I don't know anything about it. Uh, Inspector, I'm innocent. Think of my c customers all Take the... it uh, easy, Mr. Honeywell. No one's accusing you of anything. Now, the way I see it is this, Holmes. Sly Sam sometimes worked with a partner. They were on a job here together tonight. They broke into this room, quarreled over the loot, and Sly Sam tomahawked him. Who owned the tomahawk? The tomahawk? Yes, of course, Lestrade, you know, Sly Sam, Sly's partner, might have been a Red Indian. Are you coming, Watson? Let me know if you find the owner of the tomahawk, won't you, Lestrade? afternoon, and the grey, depressing London weather did nothing to help clear up my confusion. Holmes kept silence as we walked, and it wasn't until the rain cleared and the gas lamps came on that he started to discuss the case. Yes, but Holmes, what I don't understand is, who put the tomahawk next to the body? I did. You did? Yes. But Holmes, Minnie's our client. So she is. Yes, but... but, but... We move the body so she won't be involved, and then you implicate her with the tomahawk. But the tomahawk is evidence, my dear fellow. Would you have me disturb evidence? That's illegal, you know. Well, really, yes, but... Well, you know, I'm, I'm very surprised at you, you know, because, after all, Minnie is our client. And it's your duty to protect our clients, not to turn... boys. Grab air. Grab air? Well, what are you talking about? Reach for the ceiling, Doc. You too, Sherlock. Oh, I, I believe she means uh, raise your hands. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? I'm right disappointed in you, Sherlock. I thought you were a straight shooter. You planted my tomahawk next to that critter's body, so I guess I'll have to shoot you. You got any last wishes, Sherlock? Well, I... Now we return to the case of the Texas cowgirl. Quite simple, really. The tomahawk I placed by the body was the one I found in the potted plant outside Minnie's room. The murderer undoubtedly hid it there, hoping to recover it later on. You mean he used two tomahawks to kill Slide? No, just one. He struck uh, Slide with Minnie's tomahawk, 
after he'd killed him, thereby giving the impression that Minnie had done it. Well, someone's trying to frame me. Obviously. Well, who is it? Could it be somebody in the rodeo? My, no good, Doc. If anyone on the rodeo saw, they saw a boss and Jack, not me. No one knows I'm a silent partner. Who's that? Oh, one of Inspector Lestrade's emissaries, I expect. Come in. Oh, Mr. Holmes, Inspector. Inspector Lestrade asked me to give you this message. Oh, thank you, Wilkins. Aha. Uh -huh. Just as I thought. What is it, Sherlock? Well, Inspector Lestrade thinks he's found the owner of the other tomahawk, the one that killed Sly. Well, who's is it? He doesn't say. Well, come on, boys. Whoever the hombre is, he's the one that's trying to free you. <laughs> uh, where's the inspector, Sergeant? In the room with the body? No, sir, he's in the room with running water. This one, sir. Running water? But they've all got running water. It means chief running water, Doc. The engine in the rodeo. Oh. Well, I took your advice, Mr. Holmes. I found an Indian. Chief running water here. Indian to London, honestly. Hi, Chief. Oh. How do you do? Well, Lestrade, has our friend uh, admitted owning the tomahawk? Well, I don't know. He keeps saying the same thing every time. You watch. Now, I'll ask you once again. Is this your tomahawk? The huh? tomahawk. You see? He doesn't savvy English, Sheriff. Oh, I, uh, I don't think I've had the honor. Oh, I beg your pardon. Inspector Lestrade, this is Miss Minnie O'Malley from Bison Jack's Rodeo. Oh, then, Miss, perhaps you can help me to make this gentleman understand what I'm trying to ask him. Sorry, Sheriff. He's a Blackfoot. All I speak is Apache. <laughs> Tomahawk, you catch him quick, kill white chief. When the hunter. To do that for? I reckon he thinks you're asking him to scalp you, Sheriff. Holmes, this is impossible. When it gets to the point where I have to learn Blackfoot to talk to a murder suspect, well, rarely. Well, what's he saying? I believe, sir, he says the tomahawk belongs to Big Chief Bison Jack. When I want suggestions from you, Wilkins, I'll ask for it. He says that he saw Mr. Bison Jack tonight in the corridor outside room number 13, the room where the body of the deceased was found. He also suggests that perhaps we might... Bison Jack? Why, sure enough, this is his tomahawk. Then it's not his? Sure, love. The vomit tomahawk slice in my room and then he went over... In your room, Miss O'Malley? Uh, a, a slip of the tongue, Strait. A slip of the tongue. 
Try, right, Sheriff. Slip of the tongue. Make them all the time. Mm. Because that wouldn't make any sense either. Wilkins. Find this Bison Jack person, or whatever they call him, and bring him to room 13. Yes, My tomahawk, Sheriff. Never seen it before. Anyhow, tomahawks all look the same to me. It's the tomahawk you loaned me for my act tonight. Left mine in my room. You didn't give us your tomahawk back to me, Minnie. I certainly did, right after the act. And I don't rightly recollect your giving it back. Chief Running Water... Your name. Chief Running Water said he saw you outside the door of this room tonight, Mr. Jack. Yeah. Wanted to talk over the act with Minnie. Did Miss O'Malley answer the door? No. I went straight back to my room. Did you get back here tonight before or after, Minnie? I reckon it's before. At least why as many weren't in a room when I knocked. Tell me, Lestrade, did any of the guests report missing jewelry tonight? No, why? Well, they will soon. But you gave the solution yourself, Lestrade. The murderer was Sam Sly's partner. Weren't you, Mr. Honeywell? I... I don't know what you're talking about. You stole Bison Jack's tomahawk to kill your own partner here in this room. Then you planned to move his body back into Bison Jack's room. This is ridiculous. If that's what I planned, why didn't I put the body into Bison Jack's room? Because Bison Jack had already returned to his room from the rodeo. In that case, I still wouldn't have left the body in my room. I could have put it in another room. Come, come, Mr. Honeywell, don't let's get academic. Who placed the jewels in the bedpost? Yes. Who did place the jewels in the bedpost? Well, I... 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 Would your employment with a corset firm stand investigation, Mr. Honeywell? It's all yours, Inspector. Ah. <laughs> Little of this. There we are. Holmes. Ah, oh, thank you, Watson. Bread. See, you can really twirl that rope, Da. Oh, I don't know. I don't think there's much to it once you get the hang of it, you know. <laughs> How'd you know that Honeywell dragged the body from his room to my room? Well, the uh, tracks in the corridor. Two heel marks in the carpet. Quite obvious. Golly, you could be an engine scout. <laughs> Minnie, uh, may I ask you something? Sure can. Would you really have shot me? Well... I reckon not. Maybe just wounded you a little. Yes, do you, boy? Yes, <laughs> do
the club. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, what's happened? You look as if you'd seen a ghost. A ghost? <laughs> Brandy, that's what I need. Brandy. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who struck you? Well, you said it yourself. It was a ghost, and without any previous warning at all, he hit me in the eye. I... Yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, no. I think you'd better have another. Well, I'll... Mm. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Now I'll begin again. Who struck you? Upon my words, Holmes, it was a ghost. The ghost. Huh? Well, do you have a headache, Watson? I... It may seem humorous to you, but I mean, look, let me tell you from the beginning. Yes, please do, but, but start right at the beginning. Right, uh, well, I was on my way back from the club. You see, it was about um, eight o'clock. And I got him to spend the street, and I was just opposite that little tobacconist. You know, makes that Yes, yes, skill. I know, yes. There we go on, Watson. What, what did you do then? Well, I saw a man in front of me suddenly clutch his chest. He was walking towards you? How do you know? Well, I mean, you said he staggered and clutched his chest. You must have been... Uh... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's logical. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, well, anyway, I rushed up to him in order to help him, you see, and he, he's still able to mumble something about his, oh, uh, he had a heart, and he lived in 19 Hooper Street, mm -hmm. and uh, would I help him get there? There were no other pedestrians? No, no, the street was completely deserted. Good, go on. Well, then um, his landlady let us in, and he was unconscious by that time, so I carried him up to his room, and I laid him out in his bed, and Holmes, he was dead. Now, look here, Holmes, he was absolutely, completely, and uh, utterly dead. I couldn't make a mistake about a thing like that. No, 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 of course you couldn't, old man. No, no. Go on, then. What happened next? Well, uh, then I told the land... Uh, the landlady rather said to me that, that she, she'd called the authorities, you see, and I left my name with her just in case, you know, they'd want me. And uh, 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 then, well, well, I thought it'd be rather more delicate if I left, you see. I mean, he must have relations. Yes, 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 it's quite right. Quite right, Watson. The most delicate situation. Yes. Uh, what was the man's name? Uh, uh, Higgins. Albert Higgins. Uh-huh. I see. Uh, and what did you do after you left the house? Well, you see, it had been a bit of an effort, you know, carrying him up like that, so I got down the stairs and yes. popped across the road into a pub yes. and, and had a pint. <laughs> yes. and, and then I started off ba ba back to the flat, you see. Well, I just turned the corner into Spender Street and there was... Where, where, was there uh, was, uh, Higgins, Albert Higgins? Uh, yeah, just face to face with me. He really was the largest life. We stood looking at each other for a minute, then he lashed out and hit me in the eye. And then, then, then really, Holmes, he vanished. Vanished? Yes, he into the blue. Well, he ran away. Well, the street was rather ill-lit, you know, and it took me a minute or two to pull myself together. Uh, and, and then I don't know whether he ran away or not, but, but he vanished. Well, that's uh, most unusual. Most? Uh, did you speak to this uh, ghost? Well, I, I may have said, uh, good gracious Higgins, or by Joe Higgins, or even uh, good, good heavens Higgins. Oh, yeah, it's perfectly natural, Watson. Uh, uh, describe Higgins to me. Well, he's uh, 50 -ish. Sandy-haired, medium bill. Well, he, he said all you observed. No characteristics. Well, now, really, Holmes, when I had the chance of examining him on the bed, the most obvious characteristic was he was dead. <laughs> but uh, how was he dressed? Uh, green tweed suit. What? Just just wearing a green tweed suit? He must be wearing something more than that in this weather. Oh, oh no, no, no. He had a, a big, floppy hat and a long overcoat. Ah. Oh, oh, and something else. Yes, I did notice something else. He limped. Aha. And was he carrying a cane? Mm, no, no okay. Well, is there anything else, Watson? Think hard. Mm, um, uh, oh, yes, yes, I remember something now. What? Yes, the, the, the second time I saw him, he was carrying a package. The first time, he didn't have one. Ah, now, this is curious. Very curious. Where are you going, Holmes? Not me. We. I'm in no condition to leave the house. Man, a morsel of raw beef will immeasurably improve your appearance. And then what? Then we shall do our best to track down the belligerent ghost of Albert Higgins. Fascinating idea, don't you think? Well, the whole thing's been most unnerving, you know. I mean, he knocks the wind out of the chest. Yes, oh, really, yeah. no. It's also a rather flamboyant character by the wide, rakish brim. I see he was an artist, too. Well, he hasn't painted very much recently. Notice the specks of paint underneath the brim here. Well, not house paint, but canvas oils. Here, what's this? Who are you, Jensen? What are you doing in poor Albert's room? Oh, good evening, Mrs. Blake. You remember me, Dr. Watson? Uh, you're the bloke who bought poor Albert in. Yes, yes. Who's your gentleman friend? Ah, this is Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Mrs. Maggie Blake, the landlady. 
Pleased to meet you, I'm sure, Mr. Holmes. Oh, poor old Albert. He was proper fond of life, Albert was. He wouldn't have popped off if he'd had his way. Oh, few of us would, madam. I was around at the local having me good night pint. And grieving for poor old Albert. He would have wanted a proper send-off with a pint of mild and bitter Albert would. No doubt he would, madam. The body, I see, has been removed by the authorities. Oh, poor old Albert on a slab. Oh, oh dear, dear. Uh, have, you, have you notified his next of kin, uh, Mrs. Blake? No. He had none. He was all alone. Oh, I see. Uh, where was Mr. Higgins employed, madam? At the Pembroke Museum, right around the corner in Spender Street. It's a picture museum. Albert was a day watchman. Uh, a day watchman, you say? Uh, well, what were his working hours? Nine in the morning till nine in the evening. Punctual as a clock, Albert was. Never late a minute. Poor Albert. He always came back from the museum then, at a few minutes after nine every evening. Aye, to make his supper. He was a proper good cook, Albert was. Excuse my saying it, sir, madam, but aren't you mistaken? Surely it's a little after eight when Mr. Higgins finished work. Because it was only a little after eight when I picked him up this evening and brought him here. Oh, no, doctor. It was just after nine. I marked the time because I was waiting for Albert to come back. He'd asked me to get him a cut of beef. He always came back just after nine. He'll never eat that beef now. Poor Albert won't. Oh, it you in the eye. Hmm? Oh, oh, no, 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 I, I just, uh, just bumped into a door. Oh, you shouldn't get familiar with a door, if you know what I mean. Well, really, that... Yes, I, I think we've found out all we can for the time being, Watson. Mm. Thank you, madam. We shan't intrude on your grief any further. Poor old Albert. It really is most embarrassing about this eye, Holmes. Did you hear? She inferred. It's a terrible situation. And she's wrong about the time. It was only a little after eight. And it's only a few minutes' walk to spend this. Time is a curious dimension, Watson. Habit and a preconceived notion can so easily reverse the hands of the clock. And yet the clock is still in perfect working order. Well, where are we going? To view the mortal remains of poor old Albert Higgins. <laughs> Well, there he is, Mr. Holmes. Nice and peaceful, I gave. Poor chap. Hmm. See anything, Holmes? Nothing that I haven't already deduced. Except that I drew an erroneous conclusion from his hat. He has painted recently, but indoors with his hat off. There are still traces of paint quite fresh under his fingernails. What does that mean? I haven't the faintest idea. Hmm. Well, you gents aren't the only ones interested in this dearly departed. Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yards looked him over, too. Oh, indeed. Oh, he's still here if you'd like to talk to him. Well, that should be very informative for one or the other, or both of us. I can't understand it, Holmes. I'm absolutely sure this is the man who punched me. I'm positive. But also the one who had the heart attack? Yes, I'm sure of it. One and the same. <laughs> well, he's punched his last punch. Well, he probably is there punching him, full of holes of pitchforks. <laughs> yes, well, I think we've seen and heard enough. Would you like to take us to Inspector Lestrade now, please? Ah, oh, hello, Inspector. Oh, Mr. Holmes, I'm surprised to see you here. Now, this is one case you can't make anything queer out of. Oh, then why, my dear Inspector Lestrade, are you here? Well, when they brought him in, somebody recognized him as Town Note Albert Higgins. I came along to check their identification. We like to give a track of our old pal to now. What was he in prison for? Counterfeiting. He made the best pound note you ever saw. Yes, he was a real artist. The straight, there's no doubt as to the cause of death, is there? Oh, sorry, Holmes. Heart failure, no foul play. I understand you were with him in his last moments. Yes, I was with him on the street when he had the attack, and I took him home. There was nothing you could do, I suppose. Nothing. He was dead before I had a chance to do anything. By the way, what time was he brought in? Oh, let me see now. It would be about, um... Ah, yes, here we are. Quarter to ten. Higgins' landlady notified Constable Smithers at half past nine. Smithers had them remove the body in a matter of minutes. Inspector, are you sure it was half past nine and not half past eight? 
No, half past nine. It's right here in Smithers' report. Why? Oh, I... Well, I... No, it's nothing, nothing at all. You're quite sure, Lestrade, there's nothing more to this than a simple case of natural causes. Ah, no, there's no mystery at all. No mystery, Mr. Holmes. What happened to your eye, Dr. Watson? Hmm? Oh, I, I just bumped into a door. A door? <laughs> oh, well, that's a new one anyway. Was it a pretty door? No, really, Lestrade. <laughs> that's all right, Watson. I won't tell a soul. <laughs> well, really, this is insufferable, Holmes. Nobody believes me. Well, why did you tell them the truth? What, that I was punched by a ghost? Yes, yes, I see what you mean. We may have to take on this case anyway, if only to protect your honor and reputation. Well, it's intolerable, Holmes. Absolutely intolerable. <laughs> Night's affair, are you? Of course I'm not. Don't be so ridiculous. Oh, come on, out with it, man. Well, I. No, there's nothing to come out with. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on, Watson. There's something on your mind. Well, I. Gosh, you'd never believe it. Nobody'd believe it. Well. Well, I met Albert Higgins in Spender Street again tonight. And he punched you again? He pulled my nose! Really? Very, very interesting, Watson. Turn to the case of the belligerent ghost. My dear Watson, calm yourself. Look here, Holmes. This whole Higgins affair has gone too far. First of all, last night and now tonight. Calm yourself, Watson, and relate. Everything hangs on this second encounter. Well, it occurred just it had last night. I was on my way back from the club, and I'd reached Spender Street. It was a few minutes ago, as a matter of fact, just after nine o'clock. I'd stayed rather later in the club than usual. There was a chap from Afghanistan. They were awfully interesting. Uh, yes, yes, Watson. Get on with his story. Well, I was rather preoccupied, as you know. This affair's cut me up, rather, and uh, although I may not show it, Anyway, I, I was going, walking along, I suddenly looked up and there was the pedestrian, a man a few feet from me. Walking towards you? Oh, yes. Of course, I didn't recognize him straight away for uh, you know who. Anyway, I sidestepped him past and he sidestepped to let me pass and then we sort of zigzagged about a bit, you know what he did on the street, and ended up by bumping into each other. Now, that's when you recognized Albert Higgins. But it was Higgins. I couldn't be mistaken. Good heavens, man, I know him like my own brother. Uh, dressed as he was last night? Exactly. And what did he do then? Well, as I told you, then he put out his hand and he... Well, yes, we'll go into that. And then he was gone. Vanished. Capital, Watson. Capital. Everything begins to fall into place. Now, there's one more question. Was he carrying a package? Well, um... Mm. Yeah, yes, he was, just like last time. I say, Holmes, do you, um... Do you believe, uh... What? The supernatural? Uh, ghosts, do you mean? <laughs> I'm silly, I know, but um, Higgins did die of a heart attack. There was no foul play. No foul play? Why, the whole affair reeks of foul play. I can tell you, Watson, I haven't been idle today. Do you know that the Pembroke Museum is showing a collection of paintings on loan from the Italian government, and that included amongst those paintings is Leonardo da Vinci's Moonlight Madonna? Well, I did read something about it in the paper. What's that got to do with Albert Higgins? Well, we must now pay a visit to the good inspector and inform him that if the ghost of Albert Higgins hadn't struck you in the eye... And pulled my nose. And pulled your nose. I would never have suspected the Moonlight Madonna would be stolen from the museum. What? Well, it's quite obvious, isn't it? Uh, oh. Thank you. Well, we'll soon know, Mr. Holmes. 
But if the picture's still hanging in its place and we've dragged the curator out of bed to check on it, well, false alarms like this don't exactly help the yard's reputation, you know. And what about my reputation, Inspector? When I say a man died a little after eight, he died a little after eight and not a little after nine. And when I say these ghosts punched me in the eye half an hour later, hang it, he punched me in the eye. Oh, we all have our off days, Dr. Watson. To err is human, as the poets say. And furthermore, if I tell you that I bumped into this chap's ghost again tonight... You didn't then... tell me about any second meeting. Oh. Oh, didn't I? Well, nothing. Nothing. An hallucination. That's what you had, Dr. Watson. Yes, it's, um, psychological. Well, it's a thing in crime today, psychology. I've been studying it, you know. You astonish me, Inspector. Oh, we're not as backwards as you think, Holmes. Oh, we like to keep abreast of the times. Well, I don't mind admitting I don't think the psychology's got much of a future. Oh, come in. Ah, Hawkins, you saw the curator? Oh, yes, sir. I'll call him, Mr. Bentham, as you instructed, sir. He was quite excited when I told him this picture called the Moonlight Madonna had been stolen. And? And so we rushed around the corner to the museum. And? Well, sir, the picture was there, hanging in its proper place. Good night, sir. Well, there you are, Holmes. As I said to Dr. Watson, to err uh, is human. Can I give you gentlemen a lift anywhere? Hmm. Thank you, Inspector. Oh, I think it might be a good idea if we called at the Pembroke Museum on our way. But you heard what Hawkins said. The picture was hanging in its proper place. My dear Lestrade. Hawkins' statement merely proves that what he and the curator saw was not the Moonlight Madonna at all. Merely an excellent forgery. <laughs> he talking about? Art, ghosts, my black eye, and psychology. Remarkable, remarkable. Only a microscopic examination of the brush stroke shows it any different from Da Vinci's work. Of course, if you still have any doubts, you, a chemical analysis of the paint mixtures will prove them to be of modern manufacture. No, no, no. You've quite convinced me, Mr. Holmes. An analysis is necessary. Dear me, dear me, this is catastrophic. Mm. A rather delicate situation, eh? Delicate? The Italian government will hold the British government responsible. But the painting is an Italian national treasure. And a theft could easily affect a pending treaty between the two nations. Mr. Holmes, Mr. Holmes, you must find the original before the Italians learn the painting's been stolen. The British government will hold me responsible. And the Yard will hold me responsible. Oh, the most prices of the lot, too. Yes, naturally. Well, we know who stole the painting and substituted a forgery, Higgins. All we've got to do now is find out where he hid it. Hmm. What time did you leave the museum, Mr. Benton? Uh, a few minutes before nine. Higgins was still on duty. You're uh, quite sure it was Higgins? I'm certain, Mr. Holmes. I chatted with him for a few moments, and I couldn't have mistaken his voice. And the night watchman relieved him at nine. Well, you heard him say that, Mr. Holmes, and that he had a package with him when he left. The night watchman swears uphill and down dale it was Higgins, all right. Well, the matter seems to resolve itself very nicely, doesn't it? Dr. Watson was punched by Higgins a few minutes after nine. The night watchman saw him leave at nine. And you spoke to him a few minutes before nine. Look, Holmes, why don't you and Dr. Watson go home and have a good night's rest? From now on, it's nothing but plain, ordinary, simple police work. Nothing you could use a magnifying glass on. Uh, true. True, Inspector. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Yes, well, good night, gentlemen. <laughs> What do we do now? Interesting affair, eh, Watson? 
Look, I don't care what anybody says. It was after eight when Higgins punched me. Well, has it occurred to you that if Higgins didn't punch you, who had the heart attack? Well, now, look here, Holmes, I... Oh, confound it. For all I know, it was Higgins who punched me and his ghost had the heart attack. <laughs> Come on, Watson. Tell me what we're breaking into. Shh, whisper. But I am whispering. Oh, God. Look here, we broke into the rear of the museum because if so, Holmes, really I don't know what's going to happen to us. Uh, here, hold this. What? Oh. Yeah, well, then there must be a bit of a vandalism at all. Oh, what are you doing? This is wanton destruction. I've never seen anything like this in my life. I forbid you to. I didn't know this side of your character, Holmes. I'm shocked. Ah, just as I thought. Love what? Good heavens, but more like Madonna. Yes, ingenious, isn't it? And yet, what could be simpler than to attach it to the back of an old mother painting? How on earth did you work that? Well, I just asked myself where I would hide a stolen canvas. Uh -huh. Holmes, have you gone mad? No, 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 no. We're just await events. I didn't think we should have to wait very long. Hmm. Holmes, Doctor Watson, what's the meaning of this? Watson, I believe you've already met Mr. Bentham in his capacity as curator of the Pembroke Museum. Allow me to present him to you now as the picture thief. Charm, Doctor Watson. Oh, delighted. I... What is this? So you discovered my little hiding place, Mr. Holmes. I'm curious. How did you know it was I and not the late lamented Higgins? Yes, I believe Dr. Watson story from the first. If Higgins died at a little after eight, it must have been someone else who struck him a little after nine. But it was Higgins who punched me home. Don't know, Watson. It was a limp, a wide, floppy hat, and an exceedingly long overcoat that punched you, seen in a dimly lit street. A psychological misidentification, as the good inspector would call it. The night watchman was also a victim of the same illusion. And um, what about the landlady? How much did you have to pay her to set back the time of death by an hour, Mr. Bentham? Oh, not much, Mr. Holmes. How did you know it was me? Dr. Watson and the night watchman both identified the nine o'clock Higgins visually at a distance. Only you pretended to have spoken to him. This meant that either you were lying or Dr. Watson was punched in the eye by a ghost. I believe the simple explanation. You almost make me feel transparent, Mr. Holmes. To anyone who viewed the facts objectively, you were. It's a pity that one crime has to lead to another. Yes, and I think it's a great pity, Holmes, that you broke that vase. Oh, yes, yes. Well, it's uh, only an imitation. Nonsense, you can't tell me that that sort of work like this is an imitation. Perhaps the pieces can be... Well done, Watson. Well done. You know, Holmes, you didn't have to invite him here to catch us. You put us in rather an awkward position. Oh, my dear fellow, I have sublime confidence in your ability to extricate us from any predicament in which my rashness may place us. Uh, might I suggest that you now fetch the good inspector? Yes, yeah, here you are. Yeah. Excuse me. I say, Holmes, Bentham punched me in the eye. Who was it tweaked my nose? Well, my dear old chap, it was absolutely imperative that I make certain that the limp, the hat, and the coat were really capable of fooling you. You? Yes, I regret to say I not only tweaked your nose, but I also pulled your leg. Oh! What 